Good morning, good morning. Blue sky, beautiful sky. Have we got cone alignment here? Not quite. Not quite. They're close, though. Garbage truck pulled in just a minute ago. I think he's finished, actually. I think he loaded on a bunch of garbage. I think he's ready to take off. He's already closed this back door. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day in Tokyo this morning. Great for our Marsian friend. He's on his Tokaido trip, I guess. He must have started, I don't know, a couple of hours ago, maybe, or something. Don't really know. <laughs> a beautiful day here today. Oops, what have we got? Is there a camera missing? There seems to be a camera missing. One sec. Where is it? There it is. Technology, technology. Any Vietnamese updates? <laughs> I haven't. I haven't talked to the guys. It's been a bit chaos. Yesterday there was the bath was open yesterday when I went in there. And I heard money of the guys chatting. A couple of people were in the bath already when I came out of the pool and went into the room. So maybe there's already been a conversation like this. So I couldn't use my little preparation thing then. And today I'm running out early. So I couldn't do it today. I got no time to get in the bath myself anyway. So we haven't had the conversation. I've got your cheat sheet you gave me rolled into my towel. Have I had a chance to talk to the boys? No. So thanks for the prep. We'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. It could be that conversations have already happened and the bath is open whenever it's possible, just like we had before. Paper is out upstairs. Ayumi-san is printing. I keep forgetting there's so many jobs going on. Oh yeah, she's printing the Yoshida boats, the daytime version of the pair. The Yoshida boats, daytime and nighttime. We're out again of that one. Ishikawa-san did a batch in October, late October, early November, and they're gone already. They're gone already. Just we're, what's the word? We're firefighting. We're just throwing resources now. It's like playing a video game. My life now, absolutely every day, it's like playing whatever it was, asteroids or something. Just stuff keeps coming at you. You shoot it down, you shoot it down, another one comes, and they just come faster and faster and faster. There's a, there's a chart. I was showing the, uh, the mods the other day. It's here. Let's pop it up. This is what's happened here this last month. This is the, this doesn't include my own business before Mocha Hong Kong, but since we started the Mocha Hong Kong brand name back at the beginning of the 20s, you can see the Kickstarter campaign. And then this last month, it just, whatever, it doesn't stop. We don't have the resources to keep this up. Everybody here at the end of every day is just exhausted with it. It's fun. It's a ton of fun. The shop is full of people and the conversations are fun and take the pictures and everybody walks out of... It's not... Somebody says it's a slope. This is not a slope. There's no way this is going to keep going like this. It's a question of when are they going to stop coming. It's revenge tourism. If you look at the real slope, of course, it's way lower. And my God. So this is not an increase in our business. This is a... What's the word for it? It's a thing that's happening right now that is not sustainable. I mean, we can't sustain it, let alone whatever. So we're in the middle of, a, of, a, of an event. Um, and I don't know how long it's going to go on for. Maud John, he keeps talking about it. He's in this, this Facebook page where, you know, people who are planning to come to Japan. And his Facebook page is increasing at that kind of, uh, at that kind of pace. So I don't know what to say. This is not sustainable, not in any way sustainable. Bubble, that's the word, it's a bubble. The, here in Japan, it's the revenge tourism bubble. And as the, although it's fun, although it's happy, we're wonderfully pleased to see our prints flying away to so many new homes. And it's so much fun to talk with the people in the shop. It's, uh, it's not sustainable and I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, John's number is like, whatever, three times, four times. I don't know. <laughs> well, someone says, I hope it's not a repeat, so we have to close down the shop. There's no plans to close the shop at all. And all... And of course not. I mean, we're successful. We're not going to close it. People have jobs. People are happy. We're raising everybody's pay. You know, everything's going well. The, the, I guess the problem really is for me. Everybody's happy. Alison's doing her work. This printer's doing her work. They're all doing their normal work. 
The problem for me is when everything else scales up, the number of requests from employees to me increase every day and the, the number of conversations with people increase every day. So the, the, the problem actually here is on this desk. On this desk. Okay, let's clean up and get... It'll be tracing and I have got to get going on the tracing because now I'm now... The plan was tracing October, November carving into December and then get going on the printing, ready for shipping January 1st. But my tracing deadline was the end of October. And we're almost there. We've got that face to do and some calligraphy, so I've got to get going on it. Let's clean off the desk. These are back. This is nice news. Let me give you three guesses as to who printed this. Three guesses. You know, you know enough about the people working here these days, nowadays. Who printed this. Beautiful embossing, nice background, nice blue gradation, rich red, no tamari, not a speck of tamari. Who printed these? It wasn't me, it wasn't Kubota-san, it wasn't Chiharu-san, it wasn't Ishikawa-san, it wasn't uh, Mr. K. It wasn't Ayumi-san. These were done, and I haven't been through the whole batch, so I can't swear that they're all going to be perfect, and they won't be all perfect, but they look pretty damn good right now. There's one that's going to be rejected, that one. They look pretty close, though. This is Yuki-san, the young Chinese girl from, from Jilin province in China. She's been here, I don't even know now, three months or something. She didn't come to us from zero. She had done printmaking over in, in her school and then in a workshop over in China and now she's here uh, doing this and these the good ones I will filter these after the stream here sometime today I will filter them and it looks like there's going to be a bunch there to go into the shop so she is really really helping she's enthusiastic she's happy just it's just plus 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 I don't know what the future will hold at the moment she's here on a student visa of course going to school to study Japanese and they're allowed to work 28 hours a week so we're working 27 and 59 minutes you know to do this we're working the legal maximum for her but where it goes from here there's no way we can't get her a visa there's no visas for craftsmen so whatever where will that be it'll be in the shop and online uh, this I think we're not out of this print yet so there are still some in the catalog but this will replace those this will go in next where can I put them my god I'm running out of room here I can't reach the stool and it's also this yesterday was a whole batch uh, a new batch of Tagobe came from Chiharu-san and uh, they're already gone these are the last ones I have to do some chiritori on this group these are Tagobe from Chiharu-san again and we've got a bit of a crisis coming She's not bored with printing these. That's the wrong word. Craftsmen don't get bored with this work. But she kind of would like not to do the same print again and again and again and again every month. So she's just done a batch now. Another 80 copies came in and we might then be retiring this for a year. I'm not quite sure. We can't blow up our craftsmen, you know. And this one, this one came in. This is for Ohashi-san. Oh, I've already packed it up. We can, we can see it. Sure. This is Seba Station. This came from Ayumi-san. Actually, on my screen, it's looking funny green. It's not so funny the green. It's more of a nice blue in real life. Is it a different color here? Oh yeah, it might be a different color here. The cameras have a different uh, white balance. This is printed on a set of blocks we have left over from the Meiji era, a company called Tansei Do. Not Tansei Sha, the company in Kyoto, but Tansei Do. I scored about 20, 24 block sets on a Yahoo auction one night. Paid more than I thought I really wanted to pay, but it turned out they were an absolute gold mine. An absolute freaking gold mine. They're in beautiful condition. For the most part, they're beautifully, beautifully carved, incredibly fine detail. The key blocks are on boxwood.
And those prints, after sleeping for decades and decades and decades in some warehouse or some basement or something, have now come to life to make beautiful prints again. I think on, this is still open on the web, but the one right now, Mr. K printed the ones that are on the shop right now, and this is the next batch coming through. This is Ohashi-san. Ayumi-san. Not the, the spider lady Ayumi. This is Ohashi Ayumi. The one that used to be called Miyashita-san. Is the bot missing? Maybe it's on its walk for the Tokaido or something. I don't know. I don't know how to restart it. I'm sorry. 1418. That's our telephone number and our address. Then the second floor. And we have a missing face. Do I have charge? Yes. <laughs> this thing about uh, no, our Martian friend, I don't know why he calls himself Martian. Uh, no, should we, at the end of this stream, should we like raid or something or go over there and all dump all of our people over on his stream for a while? I don't know. I don't know how to do that, actually. We've, I've never been involved in sending a raid, just we receive them. And if that's something why uh, we should be doing, let me know towards the end of the stream. He did talk about the margin, but I just also remember he didn't also want me to use his real name. So um, I think maybe he did. I'm not sure. So Okay, let's get tracing. Okay, when we, get, when we get to the end of the stream, we have, I know there's a show and tell today. We have, by the way, a dynamite, dynamite, dynamite show and tell. We can blow your socks all the way down the Tokaido. It's a set of prints I know, I've known about for years, and I don't really like them. I don't want to make prints like that, but they are dynamite. Something to see what's capable and what's possible in the woodblock technique. Tease, 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 9.15, we can open a package. Let's do some work. My God, 15 minutes gone and not a stroke of work done yet. This really is part of the problem, you know, talking too much and not working enough, but whatever, what can you do? I think what I thought earlier was a hair, was a whisker. I think that's really part of the nose. I think that curve, it was wrong before. I put a whisker there, but I think this curve is actually the nose. The whisker can deal with itself.
Let me maybe get closer, get this in the right position. Hang on a sec. Noses in ukiyo-e prints are funny. You know, the classical depiction of all noses in ukiyo-e, it's what do you call it, a three-quarter nose? I've got the nose straight on. That's not common in ukiyo-e. What's common is, you know, I think it's called a three-quarter nose, where the nose just comes, I can't see it at the same time. You know the deal. The face line is there and the nose sticks out. Then the eyes are there. So you can do a nose in classical ukiyo-e with one line, just straight down the tip and away it goes. But as soon as you put the face straight on, and this is almost never done in ukiyo-e because you end up with what you see here. There's no way to draw a nose with one line. You've got to draw it with two lines coming out and it looks bizarre. He hasn't done it. You know, the, the female noses, they come down with one line and the other line and they look really, really dorky. So the ukiyo-e artists just basically gave up on it for 250 years. They gave up and they put everybody's face at, at part profile. And this is different, there's no beauty here. He's just trying to draw this strange dude and he's trying to give an impression of strangeness, an alien. These three characters are supposed to be people from some far off distant country, you know, that have strange shapes and characteristics. But how much belongs here and how much just, just to start with let's just draw what he drew see what it looks like when you take away the background and go from there I don't know about this. For the minute, let's 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 sort of replicate what we see at the other side. It's supposed to be at the end of the stroke. No, it makes no sense because it has the heavy end at the other line, at the other end. You can't have a heavy end to a stroke at both ends. Let's leave it there for now. We'll get the eyes in, see what it looks like. <laughs> so John's got the key there, like the guy with the eight foot neck is going to be complaining about the shape of his nose. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> and David, who's talking? I don't know. For most of my school life, the school years, when I was, I don't remember it so much from when I was in like elementary school, but as soon as I got to be a teenager or whatever, it seemed to be a thing that Dave had a big nose. And I, I guess I do, I don't really know. To, to, to me now, my nose seems normal. Well, I live in Japan, the, the land of tiny noses, so I'm, all, I'm obviously, I'm a giant among noses here in Japan. But in my own culture, I don't know. But all through my teenage years, the earliest teenage years I can remember. And it was big nose, big nose, you know. And I had a crew cut. My mother used to force us all to get our hair. So I got these flappy ears like Prince Charles. And this, to me then, monstrous nose. So I was, you know, whatever. I wasn't an insecure little child. That's a wrong thing to say. But I was very, very self-conscious that I had this big nose because people said so. And maybe I do, maybe I don't. Now, at my stage of life, now I could care less what my nose looks like, of course, you know. But it was a thing. There was, you know, there's that kid with the big nose, the big schnoz. I don't even know. I don't, you know. I can't imagine nowadays thinking about such a thing. But when you're 13 years old or something, 15, you know. I don't remember. 
remember how I felt. I wasn't an insecure little kid. I was fine, quiet little boy. So people thought I was insecure because I was quiet. The kid with his nose in the book all the time, that kind of stuff, you know. But definitely my nose got some attention. I don't know. Maybe this is why nowadays I never cut my hair. Because I want to hide my ears and have stuff around so my nose doesn't look big anymore. Could be. This could be, what do you call it? What's the psychology 101? I forget the word. Defense mechanism. Is this a defense mechanism? <laughs> like I care anymore, you know. I certainly do not want to be 15 again, absolutely not. I wouldn't mind being 25 again, but I sure wouldn't want to be 15 again. Now, what do we do about these eyes? They're not wrong or bad, but how much do I make them match? Because we've got this guy, he bumped up a little bit too much against the eyebrow. So let's try drawing this, leaving out, let's try this. Let's, let's give him a clean separation. Let's basically draw the shape that he drew. But let me separate it from the eyebrow. And the printer is going to look at me like this, you know, there's, a, there's such a small gap here between the eyes and the eyebrow, the, between the pupils and the eyebrow. Oh no, that's the eyebrow. What is it? The lid between the... What are we down here? These are the eyebrows up here to show, is it? So this is the, the lid of his eye and the pupil, and there's such a small gap in there. At the scale we're going to be printing this, it will really tend to fill with pigment. So I've got to try and do something here that looks like a normal eye, and yet that will be, will be, won't cause the printers to have fits. An expression, you know, look at that. You just put that tiny negative curve on that and it makes the guy look sad, a little bit wistful. And again, remember, the scale we're looking at, this is going to exist at about that scale. Here's my hand for my finger for comparison. That whole face is going to be the size of my fingernail. Are we okay, or does he have a strange expression? Let's go back and look at the original again. If I turn mine off, let's look at the original. Does he look happy? I don't know. I think he does. He looks a bit happier, right? The smile here is more there. So should I put that, should I close that gap? Let's try it. Because this is an important point. We shouldn't muck around with... Uh... Oops, let's... Uh... Let's see what happens. I'm not convinced the gap was intentional. I think the... The 
this will actually be worse for the printers, you know. Critical, man. Critical, critical, critical. The other thing too, we've expanded this so high, we're blowing this up onto a full screen. But when I'm there with my knife, the tip of the knife, I won't even be able to see this. Even if I can catch a nuance now here with the brush, whether I can actually catch that with a knife is a different story too, you know. He's happier. He's definitely happier in real life. I've done something to take away the happiness. The mouth becomes the most important thing here. What's wrong? How have I lost the mouth? Let's have a look. Well, the mouth is there. Have I maybe flattened the mouth too much? Have I lost a bit of curve on the mouth? Let's go back and have a look at that. I don't think so. My line is right exactly on top of the mouth. The mouth goes up to the whiskers in the original. And so does mine, not? Did we extend that a bit more up then? Oops. Yeah, it's funny. There it is. The smile is back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't actually all in the eyes. It was partly in the mouth. Interesting. All right. I think we'll, we'll go with it there. As I said, what we're seeing here now and what I'm going to be able to do with my knife to replicate this at the scale we're going to be carving is going to be very, very, very difficult. Someone's asked about the wrinkles in the mouth. Have I cleaned up the mouth too much? I don't think there's anything there. I think he just tried to draw. There's roughness in the paper. What you're seeing here is not drawing of certain character in the mouth. It's a brush stroke and the irregularities you're seeing are due to the paper. There is no, he has not drawn any character in the mouth. There's no wrinkles in the mouth that have been drawn. I think we're good to go. Let's move on. Again, we're, we're discussing something that is beyond my capability to carve at this point. Okay, let's move on. I believe, oh, there's a couple of whiskers missing. I 
But that might be it now for the characters. And we still have to attack the kimono patterns. We still have to attack the patterns, and I guess I can explain what I'm going to try and do with the patterns. I, know I haven't prepared it yet, so but the concept. What he's done here is he's shown us where he wants the pattern. What have we got? It's not a pattern that repeats across the entire fabric. They are patterns that have a pattern, and they're mostly they're based on a... This one seems to be a triangular master shape. There's a little thing in the middle. It's sort of a hexagon that's been chopped into a triangular shape. And we see it here. You can see the triangular shape here, 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 here. When I was carving the 100 Poet series, all of the people in the book had stuff like this. They had a pattern that was done once, and it was replicated without perspective. You would create the pattern. I'm going to use this thing as a circular tool here. Just out here. here. We can use it this. This is a circular object. Imagine we draw the pattern once somewhere out in an open space where we don't need it. We draw the pattern in flat perspective, neatly and cleanly, at the scale that we want. Then, again, this was every one of those prints in the Port series was done this way. You take the pattern, and this is how it was done in the old days, not with Photoshop. You take the pattern, trace it on paper, and then you trace it here, 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 here. You don't trace the full pattern, you trace it just the part you need that is, that is exposed by the folds in the fabric. And no matter what the curvature of the fabric, whether it was right here, which you're seeing face on, or whether it was up there on the curve of the fabric. Now in real life, if there's a circular pattern, you're gonna see it as a circle in the face on part. But then when the pattern appears up here on the fabric there, you don't see it as a circle anymore. You see it as a perspective oval. Excuse me, mailman. More auction goods. We won't be looking at that now. Anyway, the point being, in real life, there is a thing called perspective. And it wasn't just the railroad tracks in the distance. It was things going round a piece of fabric. The ukiyo-e artists didn't do it that way. They, of course, there's no railroad tracks there, but even when they were drawing a person, the fabric lines were what they were. We see a sort of a three-dimensional object. Let me get rid of my, my tracing here just to try and simplify this. We can see it's a three-dimensional object. This leg is in front of that one, so it's not totally flat. There is modeling in the fabric lines. But they never, ever, ever, and I mean ever, put modeling into their patterns. And we see this all across the board. A pattern was created once and then copy-pasted into place with no perspective across the image. I talked about this in the last video, I think, about the Hokusai, uh, two videos back, where I showed an example. Hokusai had prepared a sketch and he had not put the patterns in. And he had, on the side of the sheet, he had drawn the pattern once very carefully. And that's it. The copy boys in the publishing house knew to replicate that pattern across the thing. So that's what I'm going to do with this print. We have three different patterns. Mr. A has this triangular chopped hexagon pattern. Mr. B, the man with the long ears, has some kind of a little, uh, it's, it's an emblem. I don't have a name for it. It's a squarish little emblem. It's a squarish little emblem. It looks sort of like a Maltese cross. And then the uh, other dude, the guy with the long neck, he has a more of a fuzzy pattern. It's some sort of little circular thing made up of brush strokes. It's sort of eight brush strokes into a circular pattern surrounded by blah, 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 blobs. So when I, I'm gonna, when I get a minute, I'm going to go on the side of this sheet of paper, somewhere where there's an open space, and I'm going to create these three patterns Maybe over here, I'm going to create these three patterns, one, two, three. 
and then using literally copy paste in Photoshop I'm going to replicate them across the sheet where they need to go rotating and putting them in where they need to go because they are all always flat there is no perspective on fabric patterns in ukiyo-e art period absolutely I think you see this, and even somebody, you're, you're talking about manga and stuff here. I think this is still a thing. Don't quote me on this, because I'm not any way knowledgeable on how manga are drawn, whatever. But there's things like, you know, uh, patterns, you know, like uh, boom patterns or exploding things or whatever, or, or you know, the, these letter set patterns that we have. And they, they put it over the thing and scrape off, and there's the pattern. And it doesn't make any, there's no perspective, there's no modeling. And it has been a thing in Japanese art for centuries. Anyway, I, we should be talking about this when I'm ready to do it. But I'm not because I haven't created those patterns. So today, for now, let's move on to another next step. Let's start tracing the calligraphy. How's our time? 8.36. We're still to go. Something webtoons are infamous for doing it for clothes. So, whatever. It is a thing. It's absolutely a thing. And I'm not doing it because I'm lazy. I could draw each one separately, but that's not how it was done. You get a good master copy, decide what you want, and then bang, replicate it perfectly across the image. Next step, calligraphy. Zip tone, yeah, just go out and buy some zip tone, Maltese cross zip toner. Is that what it's called? I thought it was called, I hate, the one I used back in the day was called Letra Set. This part is going to be fun. I love this kind of calligraphy. I'm a lefty, I have no experience with the Japanese brush. But I think, at least unless I'm fooling myself, I think I get it. I get most of the ideas and the shapes and the way that the strokes move and the, the ins and outs of it. I've been carving calligraphy since, you know, since the year dot, for me, in printmaking terms. And I've only ever uh, used a brush once, and that was you know, at the point of a gun. I really, 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 really did not want to do it. We were uh, filming an NHK program, one of the Journeys in Japan series, and I had not known I was signing on for just to be the tour guide for, for, a, for a travel documentary, 30-minute Journeys in Japan program. And I don't even know where we were. We were in Yamanashi or Yamagata or somewhere. And we visited a place that was making, uh, that was making paper. Not the kind of paper we do for woodbot printmaking. I think they were making paper for shoji screens, whatever, big, big, big sheets of paper. And as the, as the travel host, I stood in front of the camera and oohed and awed at the things we saw in the factory, whatever. Then we go out into the showroom where they've got this deal where all the people who did the factory tour, they get a free sheet of paper and they're supposed to write their name on it with a brush. And the guy sat me down at the table, got the camera, and said, okay, Dave, it's your turn, here you go. And I'm like, no, no, wait, I don't, I don't do this. I, I carve calligraphy, but I'm, I'm a turkey. I can't draw this. He says, sit down. It's all in the script. Didn't you read the script? And I'm like, you told me I'm not supposed to read the script because they don't on the travel programs. You're not supposed to know what's coming up because you're supposed to do it all open-eyed and ooh-ah. Anyway, long story short, there is somewhere out there an NHK travel program with Dave floundering with a brush to try and write his name. And like, I shouldn't even talk about it because now people will look for it and try and find it. But. Uh, But no, I have zero, other than that, I have zero experience with a brush. I don't remember where we were. Yamagata, maybe, I don't know.
Those were the days. They don't hire me for that program anymore. I'm too old now. <laughs> they, they told me I'm too old. <laughs> I'm too old and too male and I have too much of a white beard. What's our time? 8.41. It'll be Ayano time soon. She's coming this morning, of course. I did tell him I was left-handed. Doesn't, doesn't, didn't, uh, didn't cut any mustard. Again, scale, eh? this is going to be so small. But anyway, we've got the shape in. Chat, chat, chat. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, what we've got here is this is the character for ear that we've just done, Mimi. This is the character for long. And this would be picture, picture of a image of a long-eared image. Oh, just a minute, or is that, that's a character we're not using. Is that Zu or is that Koku? 
I'm going to show my ignorance here. It could be the long-eared picture or the long-eared country, country of the long ears, because that's it's a character that's not in common use these days. And it could be an earlier version of the character we use now for zoo, as in picture, or for all I know, because of the box, it hints to me that it could be country. I don't know, and I'll show my ignorance here. We have the same thing to show. Chest hole picture. It must be zoo to show. Chest hole. I struggle enough with the characters that are in normal common use. I don't need to struggle with characters that have been archaic for ages. So somebody's saying it looks closer to Kuni to show. Rangaksha. No, you're, you're the boss here. I will defer to you exactly. So it's the country of the long ears, the long eared country. Thank you. I defer absolutely. Also, Rangaksha, you're pronouncing this Naga Mimi, Onyomi. Is there a Kunyomi for this? Cho something zu? Cho. There's different ways to pronounce the Japanese characters here. Rangaksha is suggesting Naga. This is Nagai. And this is Mimi. This is the Japanese pronunciation for those words. But in Japanese language, as soon as you put things in a combination, it's common to use the Chinese pronunciation or der derive from the earlier Chinese pronunciation which for the kanji for nagai would be cho, and I don't know what it is for mimi. I don't remember. But he's suggesting it's naga mimi no kuni. Ji is the onyomi, thank you. So cho ji koku, cho ji kuni. Naga mimi no kuni sounds fine. I don't know. It's all fun and games, until you sit down to take a test. <laughs> Luckily, Dave is not in the testing era. I don't need to take a test to, to, to see my Japanese proficiency. I just muddle along at my stage in life now. I really have huge respect for many of the young people now coming to Japan who have studied these things and who have test levels and we've done all this stuff on the tests. Their knowledge of the language is much better than mine. But at my age now, then my excuse anyway, is just for me sitting, uh, studying and taking tests is not uh, a useful way, a useful use of my time left on this planet. It's my excuse anyway. But for those who are younger and who are going to stay here a long time, absolutely study this stuff, get knowledgeable about it, you know. Rangaksha there is a perfect example, you know. It's funny, you know. I'm somebody who has enjoyed books and re reading and learning and stuff all his life. And yet now, now I find myself in this position of being the old guy. I don't need none of that book learning stuff. Which is a bit of a paradox because that hasn't been me through most of my life, you know. I've liked to think of myself as a, a well-educated and a knowledgeable person. And yet more and more these days I'm in the other position. I'm, I'm the guy with the picked up knowledge but doesn't have the, the real knowledge, you know. Funny. I'm the kid that when we got the textbooks each September, you know, school started in September and we'd go to each class and there's English class and whatever, history and blah, blah, blah. And the, the, so at the end of the first day or the first couple, every, end of every day for the first couple of days, we'd come home with the new textbooks. And not, these are not like Japanese textbooks, which are like only 20 pages long. These were, were big, thick, heavy textbooks and they were issued to us, of course. Some of them are brand new, some of them were, it had been used for five, six, seven, ten years, and people's names and scribbles were all over the place in them. 
But for me, that was one of the most fun days of the year. We got the textbooks. And for the subjects that I was interested in, like the social studies or history or the, anything to do with science, whatever, or the, the, or the math book, I just take it on the first day, first couple of days, I'm just like, I'm going to glom this and read through it. I don't want to say that I learned the whole course in one day. That's not true at all. But I paged through the book, looked at what I found interesting, flipped through it. Those books for me were interesting. That was one of the highlights of my school year. You got your brand new binder, your fresh pencils and all that kind of stuff. And these textbooks. And when you were lucky, it was a just published textbook. So nobody had had it before you. So yeah, me and the books, there's the history. But nowadays, the idea of sitting down with a Japanese language textbook and studying and reading this stuff, that would be a nightmare. That would be my definition of, of died and gone to hell, you know. Funny name. Pile of fresh textbooks, I remember the pleasure. <laughs> Me in school, eh? my God. Don't have this conversation just before going to bed or I'd have nightmares. My hair is throwing off the autofocus. My hair? I'm autofocus down here? Are we joking here? I don't know. Someone's asking, does it matter that the first character has an extra bit? I'm not quite sure what you're talking about here. As far as my knowledge goes, that that's the correct way to spell Mimi. And this is the correct way, I believe, to draw Nagai. So I'm not sure what the... Uh... Not sure what the question is here. If you're talking about this one, that's quite possibly archaic. I don't know. These, to me, these two characters seem completely normal. Hair is throwing off the focus. I'm not in there. Oh, you mean down like that, huh? Nanda. Am I getting too close? We must be coming up to Ayano time, the show. Going upstairs, that must be Yamada-san slamming the door like that. Our young accounting boy, Yamada-san. Or it could be you know, Afuki-san. She's uh, pretty heavy set. She goes bang, 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 bang up the stairs. She's, uh, she's still here and she is producing some work. My God. Every time I go through the room where she's doing stuff, there's another new print or another stack of new prints. That lady from the Netherlands, we met her on the stream here a couple of times. She is really, really making good use of her time here. There's literally a stack of different prints growing. You know, It's interesting to see. 
She doesn't talk the talk. She walks the walk. She's busy. She's not interested in like you know printing, becoming a printer for us, whatever. But it's uh, it's a bit sad to see someone who is uh, so productive, you know, and she's going to go away and be productive for her own uh, her own work, you know. I don't have something ready to show you right now, but either before she does go back to Holland, we will definitely bring her back and say, show me some of the stuff you've done. Show us some of the stuff you've done. Because she's been, uh, she has really been busy. Someone's asking, did we do anything for Hokusai's birthday? No, we didn't, you know. Somebody mentioned it on stream here last week, and I was thinking, yeah, maybe we should get going. <clears throat> but I, I told you nothing. That graph I showed you a few minutes ago, that's our lives just eating. Our, it's everything is eating our lives. So the idea that we would play around with Hokusai's birthday right now, I'm sorry. It just wasn't possible. You mentioned it. I heard your comment, and then... It just got completely blown. Someone says, am I interested in kanji or do I learn it naturally? Both things are true. I am interested. And if my life was in a different place, I would love to, you know, go to a good teacher, grab a brush and start at the beginning and learn how to do this properly. Because I do love these things. They're really, really cool. They, they hit all the buttons that, that match my my DNA and stuff. The puzzle button, the graphic shape button, the mystery button. And just the idea of what they are is just so cool. A graphic for each picture and concept and how they work together in combinations. I would love to do this, but at my stage in life now, there's no way I'm going to start studying calligraphy. Impossible. It's a question of uh, tri triage. Is that the right word for it? There's a certain amount of stuff I can do with the hours that are available each day. And... Uh, we, we came across this yesterday, actually. I, I had a small meeting with Ayano-san and Yamada-san. And I said, okay, there's something we've got to do here. We're doing the next mailing about our Christmas gift things happening on November 11th. And remember that plan we were talking about before? I've got to get going and get this implemented. And they both shut me down. They said, Dave, that plan will have to wait. You cannot do that. There's no time in, in, in your life right now to do that thing properly. So forget about it, put it away, save that idea for later. And I'm like, well, no, no, I want to do this. This is our last chance to get this going this year. And they both, seriously, they shut me down, the two of them. This lady here and Yamada-san. They nice. said, no, 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 no. It was yesterday, I was talking about, you know, I had this new idea, cool idea for something we should do with our shopping cart, you know. We got to do this right now. And this you, she, this is the lady with common sense. Her and Yamada-san said, I forget, well, you know, I don't want to exaggerate. They crossed their arms and said, no. And then they explained to me why it wasn't a good idea to do this. You're you going to do this and you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, no. You're going to finish this by going to I know. <laughs> no, 
no, the, no, the reason I, is, somebody's asking, Dave, why aren't you studying calligraphy more? You like it so much. Why aren't you practicing calligraphy? You know, it's a question of how many, how many minutes there are in every day and stuff. But I'm still, you know, agree that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should do that. I know. We should do, but we were talking about it for years. So, before so, so. you came, we were talking about this, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not teasing here. I'm not trying to tease. It was just, you know, step forward just a little bit. I don't know if I get the camera okay, in the wrong is. place or something. No, that's okay. Hi, hi. Hi, Yonasan. How you doing? How you doing? Mm. Mm. Busy, busy. Mm. They're moving mm. tomorrow, I guess. It's tomorrow moving day. Tomorrow moving tomorrow day, moving. yeah. Tomorrow's a national holiday. No holiday for her because they're doing the actual move. Yeah. I think you're, you're taking. T you're leaving early today, right, to get, help get the preparation yeah, for it. So, I'm so, 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 leave so. Around so. Like one. Yeah. What do you guys do? Are you renting a car or a truck or something? What's going to be the actual physical thing here? Tomorrow moving down is coming. Oh, that's right. You told me that. Yeah, that's right. We rent a car um, last week to take some plants to the to the new house because mm. we can't leave the. The plants mm, with the, the moving the, company, yeah, yeah, we have tons of plants. So, okay. so. so it, with the way it happens, the moving company they must have come around already. Did they drop off a bunch of boxes already? Yeah, already and you've yeah. been filling boxes. Filling boxes. So, so that's our the way it works. Are just yeah. full of boxes yeah. and not really comfortable yeah. to live. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really cool system. Maybe it's the same in the West. Whatever they bring all these boxes and there's there's sort of a, a grid on the side of each box. You mark kitchen and you mark bathroom and you mark priority mm -hmm. must be put on top. And you 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 put the code on the outside of these boxes and put your dishes and whatever inside. Yeah. I guess you can probably order a full move where the guys come and fill the boxes, but you've ordered a partial move. They bring the boxes, yeah, yeah. you pack them, mm -hmm. and on the day they move, the truck comes, they put them in, yep. over the new house, out they come. So this. So, so. It's Taran's birthday today, but like I feel so bad because I unplugged the fridge already because we got rid of water. <laughs> so the fridge is not active, yeah. so we can't put any, any food inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can I can cater food. I can buy cakes, but cakes where where do where do they, where do they mm -hmm. you know do they go? Mm -hmm. So I can't do anything special for him today, and we're busy packing. So we're not gonna go to a restaurant tonight, I guess. Oh, okay, but wait a minute. You you said you're leaving early. You're going home in the early afternoon. Just stop at the bakery and get a little cupcake or something. I didn't forget your birthday, you know. I whatever. didn't forget his birthday. It's <laughs> so. just I can't do uh, anything special. Is he so. watching this morning or not? He's so. busy. So. Right? You might be watching. So happy. I didn't even know. Tom. I don't know your birthday. I don't even know my kid's birthday anymore. So whatever. Oh, so your birthday is coming soon. My birthday is coming soon. I don't forget that one. So, 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 so. Our, my own family, the rule for birthdays is one up and one down. For example, <clears throat> the liability is I'm supposed to remember my parents' birthdays and my kids' birthdays. I don't remember my brother, sister, or my grandchildren. It's just, it's just too many and too gross. So our family rule is one up and one down. Mm -hmm. And I don't know most how many families handle this, you know. And I don't expect my kids to, you know, like we don't send presents anymore, stuff like that at our age. It's just mm -hmm. pointless. Also, you know? this guy, I thought the uh, birthday is more. For my thing mother, than, like, flowers the is the gesture. We don't do presents. And for my kids, nothing. We just, I remembered you. I, I sent flowers to my kids, mm. and, but they don't do anything for me. And But this is my request. Mm. What am I going to send me? A pair of socks or something? Like what? You know, whatever. So we can't do this. <laughs> So there will be a Skype message that says, Hi, Dad, happy birthday. And uh, that's all we want. That's you know? easy, this thing. But you're a young couple, so of course, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this Give them a cupcake and a kiss or whatever, right. you know. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you definitely need a new shirt, I guess. Uh, this is a brand new <laughs> shirt. Oh, this is, this is a brand this new is... shirt. So, no problem. <laughs> no holes. <laughs> no holes. <laughs> Sadako's watching. She got <laughs> me this shirt. <laughs> this is the Sadako <laughs> shirt. This is a new one, <laughs> so. new one, isn't it? <laughs> Are we allowed to ask how, how old is Taran san? Is that public knowledge? or? or? He is. 31. Thir 31. I yeah. wasn't sure if this was the 30 or the 31. So he's, he's crossed one of these big, so this, so this. when the first number changes, you know. I'm 30, he's 31. All right, yeah, we didn't, I didn't ask you that. So you're looking forward, after the move is over, you're looking forward to settling down and just relaxing for a while. Yeah, sure? but it's going to take a while to organize everything in the I'm new back. house, so bit by bit. Yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. in a rush, mm -hmm. so. What are you going to do about the neighbors? What's the plan? This uh, is interesting. See yeah. what she has planned here. Yeah, so I bought some snacks for neighbors. Uh, I don't know how many I was supposed to buy, so I just got snack for uh, the house on the left-hand side, right-hand side, the one in front. Have you met these people yet? Well, briefly, yes. I said hello, they said hello, but you know, that's it, because I mm. didn't have anything to, to mm. give them, mm. so mm. That, mm. That, was the, that wasn't a proper greeting. Okay, so in your case, there's three. It's left, right, and front, because these are houses. These are houses. Okay. okay. So yeah, uh, 
probably tomorrow, as soon as the moving van arrives at the new house, um, mm. I'm gonna take the snack with him, mm. and then knock, knock, knock. Hello, mm. we're moving mm. in. Mm. You say snack, but what what have you got actually? Uh, like a snack from department store. You mean, like, but I mean, like a box of cookies or something box like this. Yeah, with, uh, with a noshi around. Mm. 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 So. We saw maybe we saw this in one of our show and tells. Maybe there was some woodblock paper that wrapped up a box of cookies or something. This, she won't be using woodblock, I guess, for this. But <laughs> no. well, so when she says snack, what she means is she's gone to a department store or someplace like this that has the selection of gifts. So these are these are designed and sold as gifts. So it's not a snack in terms of, you no, know, no, no, no. Uh, something. But yeah, so. cookies, snack. And yes. this is the way. I, I don't know in the West, whatever. You know, I think my... Memory, this may be wrong, you guys can correct me. You're the people moving in. What would happen, I think, in my community in Canada is the, the neighbor comes over to you and says, hi, I'm John, we're gonna be neighbors, it looks like. You guys are real busy. Here's a casserole so you guys don't have to make lunch or something like this. That's hey. my memory of this. The neighbors come over first. Can we help? You know, do you need anything? Can we do anything or, or whatever? Here in Japan, it's the other way around. The neighbors stay quiet. They don't do anything. They don't offer to help, nothing at all. Yeah. And it's Ayano-san's responsibility, the lady of the house, to introduce herself to each of the immediate neighbors, and she must take a little gift. We're sorry, we're bothering you, we're going to trouble, we're going to be making so, so, so. noise, banging shelves, and the moving truck, blah, blah, blah. So, 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 Interesting. I don't want to fail in this, uh, this part, so... <laughs> Interesting, because this is, you know, if you get off on the wrong foot or something, yeah, yeah. Endless trouble. Because uh, Endless each trouble. house is close to each other, you know, we'll definitely see each other mm, often. Mm, so mm, I don't want to, mm, you know, create a mm, bad mood or yeah, like start, you yeah. know, bad relationships. Yeah, so. yeah. Remember, we're about to find out their rent is really lower than it should have been. So there's this <laughs> other shoe. Why is the rent so low? They're going to find out tomorrow night, the guy next door, heavy metal, rock and roll, <laughs> 11.30 at night <laughs> <laughs> well, our neighbor, the, the current house is like not, not great, so well, we'll be happy anyway. In the, you're in an apartment or a house? In, in an apartment. In an apartment. Yeah, so, I don't right. know, the guy next door, oh my god. What's the problem? Noise? Yeah, noise. Kitanai noise. What do you oh mean, kitanai noise? I don't know, like, ah, <laughs> toka. Strange <laughs> noises? I don't know, trying to get his, uh, thing out of his like throat or although he's an old man or something with coughing and, and coughing spitting and, and, and sneezing and <laughs> that's how i wake up every morning this year why am i suddenly <laughs> uncomfortable in this conversation <laughs> he takes shower early in the morning like 5 30 a.m which is fine but he keeps the door open the window open so we can hear everything like, like shower sound and he's like <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I really needed to hear this, but okay, I asked the question. <laughs> so you guys are you're happy to get I'm out of there, happy okay? To get out of it. But you're gonna find out what's the problem with yeah, this new yeah, place, yeah, you know? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this time we will, we will try our best. At least we will not cause any problem. <laughs> <laughs> when you leave a place, you don't give gifts to the people when you're leaving. It's just you disappear. The show disappear. Just and disappear. When you're living in an apartment, I guess you don't really, you know, I know. Yeah. with yeah. your neighbor, yeah. So. yeah, well, it's case by case, you know, it depends. When we were living in the apartment, you know, after we first came here, I got two kids, the people next door have a kid, so the kids become part of the mingling. You know, mm -hmm. the kids are playing uh, together, no. so the parents see each other. But when it's just adults living here and adults living there, you don't mix so much at mm. all, you know. And I've mentioned this before, my Ome home, I moved in there in the year 2000. I have never set foot, ever ever in my neighbor's house. I've been to the door, knock, knock, had a conversation. I've never set foot in that house. And that's not unusual mm. at all. Did you ever go in the home or apartment of the people next to you no, when you no, 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 no. They don't even greet, you know. No. So I was like, yeah, well, yeah, rude, yeah, strange, yeah. okay. <laughs> Just I remember when we were growing up in Canada, the houses are in our own. We all knew each other. The doors were unlocked. And like literally, my mother would go into the neighbor's, knock on the door, and the neighbor's not there. The, 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 the Dutch lady that was next door to us. So my mother would go into the woman's kitchen, grab a cup of sugar and come back. And you know, she's doing some baking, she ran out of sugar. So she'd go next door to ask for some. If the woman's not there, she just goes in the kitchen, grabs it and comes back. Because it's just, that's the way it was, you know. And of course she would return it. She would go back later in the afternoon or after doing her own shopping, she would go back and say, oh, I borrowed a cup of sugar here, you know. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, you know. 
but yeah, in Wales and Taran's house, you know, uh, in summer, I was surprised to see like his uh, family friends coming in and going out, mm, you mm. know, grab beer, yep. and it just left. And in Japan, I don't, I don't go into, yeah, like Incons going into someone's house and just grab beer from Look someone's at her face. fridge. Her face is just. Oh. <laughs> 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 You must ask. You must ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, but that's yeah. that's normal and a casual, you know, easy going. I guess. I guess. Yeah. I, guess, well, you know, so, yeah. so, I enjoyed so, that. So. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Did you see her face? Then? <laughs> she looks like she's watching a horror movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it was like it was in it happened in Wales and it was yeah. his house and his yeah. fami uh, family. Your friends, friends, of course, of course. Okay. No, I get it. I get it. You know, I'm uh, sure not every community in the West is like this. <laughs> not all American people living in downtown some so some city leave their doors open every night and people walk through the house. I'm sure it's not like that. But yeah. Well, so this, yeah. I know Japanese houses do knock knock. Ojamashimasu. And you, and Take you, your shoes off and so, but even shoes you get in. I mean, how many strangers' homes have you been in? You don't. We just don't do that. No, no. If you need to meet somebody or talk, you do this outside, or you do it at a restaurant if mm, it's a so meeting. You know, meeting. You just don't go to people's homes. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's one. That's one thing that I want to do. Like once I get older. You know, have a house in Enaka and, and you want people to come over for dinner so, and so, stuff. So, so, but everybody so. says this when they're your age and it just doesn't seem to yeah, happen, so you know. Saying. Good so luck and I'm ready, give me a call. I'd love to come over for dinner, you know, not as the boss, <laughs> but you know you know. So this net. I don't know. It's a really bizarre part of this culture. Before I came here, I never would have believed it. You don't go in people's homes, but it's true. It's really, really also, true. Also, we don't have enough space for inviting guests, you know, having like a five, six guests well, that, and on the same day. So. In the old rabbit hutch days post-war, that was true. But it's certainly not true in an Inaka environment. Yeah, and it's not true in the environment you're living in now. Most young couples who are living in a, a mansion, whatever, there's easily room to have another couple over for dinner. Absolutely. Awesome. Once you got kids, social life changes, but that's the same in any country, mm. of course. You know. I don't know. I don't know. But that's my dream. So you mm. are. We'll see. We'll see. You will be invited. Can I come over, Sunny? Can I come over for dinner? Ichi mae. yen for visit. Okay. So we're gonna buy you want to get going because you want to leave it early, leaving early today. So 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 so, 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 no lunch today, yes. No lunch. You're leaving about around noon then. Around okay. well, one o'clock. Okay. Hey. And we'll see you back on Monday. So this. Good luck. And uh, well, I asked before, you know, because I'm a Canadian boy. I asked her in Taran, like, can I do anything to help? You know, because my old my image is you rent a truck, you call your friends, and away you go. We've talked about this before. And they've they've said nope, 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 nope. They've got it all handled. I mean, the moving is the moving company, and they don't want somebody else cracking boxes and hanging stuff on shelves of course they don't no 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 couple here would want that so. uh, Taron would uh, would do like two two man work i guess i'm i'm useless i'm too weak this kid he can carry like heavy stuff well i can't so. yeah so but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, anyway well, the sure. they know the offers are there but of course they just want to do this by themselves you know, you know. see you when we see you hi take God care and Taransan, because he is a, an employee of mine and a carver, I take it easy with the picking up the boxes. So you know, I mean, really, this mm -hmm. is no joking here. Mm -hmm. Don't do something stupid. Yeah. You know, he's really careful with uh, with uh, with his right hand. Like mm. when he's like holding something heavy, he always mm. uses his mm. left hand. Mm. So, mm. but is he like a pianist? You know, they don't shake hands because they're afraid someone's going to grip too tightly and hurt their fingers. You know, no, that's the thing. There are musicians, uh, pianists, or flute players, whatever. They will never shake hands with people. Because there's some tough guy comes along, squeezes them, and that's it, and they're in trouble for playing the piano. This is a thing. Mm, the Toronto sounds okay. So okay. 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 Anyway, please, seriously, tell him to take it easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I think he's watching anyway. Yeah. So, no, whatever. You know, Tansan, yeah. you know the rules. Yeah. So it's easy. Any, any heavy box, you know, whatever. The last thing we need is staff members who are back trouble and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Okay. Okay, good Hi, luck, okay. ma'am. I'll see you later yes. today. You and me too. We've got a checklist to work through before you head off then so for the weekend and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, okay. 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 
As a guitarist, I let the other person decide how tight a handshake will be. Well, what if it's too late? You've, you're, you're a gentle handshake person. You proffer your hand and he's an iron fist. He just crushes you. I mean, this is the problem. You can't stick your hand out because the big dude is going to show I'm a big man and he's going to do the power grip and crush you. So I actually don't like shaking hands much either, you know. I mean, I'm not a flute player anymore, but it's, you know, I don't do the power grip. I'm not a big man. I'm not muscular. And when you're facing one of these people who do feel they have to, to, to show how much of a man they are with their grip, then it's no fun, actually. So you're not supposed to go full crush. You shake firmly. I guess I just seem like a wimp, whatever. We do shake hands or somebody at the end of a conversation, you know, stick it out. And what I'll do to try and stop this, to try and make sure I'm okay, I'll put out two hands. His hand has been proffered, so I put out my right hand to go with it, but I put my left hand on it at the same time. So I got more of a cup. I'm cupping his hand like this rather than do the thing because I really don't want to get crushed. And there are people who do that still. So Dave is a two-hand guy. Maybe it makes me look like a wimp or, or a woman or something. I don't know. That's my way of doing this. Okay, we have, uh, we have encroached into show and tell time. I get it, I get it. People are warning me and I'm on this. I'm on this. We're gonna need some space. Shrink this. Shrink this or maybe put it off, let's see, whatever. Okay, what we have today for show and tell is a package of prints, a set of prints that's made pre-war. I don't know the actual date. I took some time yesterday to try and hunt around and find out the date these prints were made and couldn't find it, anything other than that they are obviously clearly pre-war. It's a package of prints made by the Unsodo company over in Kyoto. And I've heard about this set. I've known about it for a long time. Uh, it comes up on auctions now and then. And I've seen it go by and it went for how much? No, thank you, I'll back off. It went for how much? I'll back off. And this is the set of prints where, that I got screwed the other day. Remember I told you the story? I had a budget for, for the month for, for prints and I blew my budget on item A, lost that auction because somebody bid more than me, so I was safe, so I then blew the budget on item B. Item A, the previous bidder canceled. It was a soggy and I ended up having to buy both. So if all things had gone normally, I wouldn't have been able to buy this because it's out of my budget. This is not one of those deals where Dave got spent 10 bucks and got some glorious, magnificent object. This cost me, what was it, 3,700 yen or something. So it's about almost $300, I think, I had to pay for this. Okay, layer one. The noisy layer, out and away. Layer two. Green tape seems to be extinct in Japan. When's the last time we saw green tape? I honestly, literally, can no longer remember. That meme seems to be dead. So anyway, back to the prints. What we've got here is a set of 25 prints, which is sometimes found as broken sets. The prints themselves come out onto, uh, into the market. <coughs> But also the set does come up, and it's a pre-war set of prints. Oh, it's not going to be recycled, let's just cut it, go. Layer 2. This is layer, does that count as a full layer? No idea, two and a half, it's up to you guys, you call it. And this is the object itself. And this is a sticker either from a bookstore or from, a, or it's an ex-libri or it's a bookstore or a library. I don't know. What we have here is this. 
there's one kanji that confuses me here. This is no, no something, to. This is to and kyogen. So the, the no theater, you know, the masks and the chanting, that's no and kyogen. Kyogen is the comic relief uh, e episodes that, that, that come, that break up a, a long, serious uh, episode of no theater. But I don't recognize this character at all. Perhaps a Dangaksa, I'm putting you on the spot here, guy. Uh, perhaps he recognized what it is. Anyway, it's no and kyogen. And the zen here simply means zen. It's the whole set, the whole full set. It's 25 prints. And the d designer's name is uh, Yamaguchi, and I don't know, Roshu, Roshu, or this is Teishu. I don't know the pronunciation of his name. I need help on this. Yamaguchi, <coughs> Yamaguchi Teishu, kana? This is Shu, the same Shu we see as in Honshu or uh, the islands. And we have 25 prints depicting different scenes, episodes, themes from the No Theater and the Kyogen. And the prints are, what's the word here? The prints are each paired with poetry, which is probably, uh, I don't know, Kyoka maybe? I don't know, I, should, I shouldn't say that, because each pair, print is paired with a poem, whatever, and the prints themselves are insane. The prints are insane. There's 25 of them. We've seen similar prints on the show and tell. They're made in what we've been generally referring to as sort of a Kyoto type of printmaking. They're full of opa opaque pigments, there are metals, there's bling, there's silver, there's gold, there's bronze, there's everything. And they are as over the top as it is possible for prints to be. And they are glued in, heavily glued down to these backboards. And the backboards are terrible, terrible paper, which is browning and toning. More prints coming outside. And I now, because I am now the, the, the curator of this specific object, I have a real dilemma. What to do? These prints are at the very edge of dying. The paper they're on has become dark and toned. They need to be released from this prison. And the only way to do that is to bang, burst apart the whole thing, take this print and its backing sheet, and you know the story, warm bath and away they go. Let's flip through some of this. The prints are, are gloriously beautiful, but they are also what is going on. Some of them we will see as we get going here. What is happening on each one? I myself don't have a clue. People who know the theater will know this episode. They will know what it's referring to. For me, they are simply visual objects. Some of them like this are less interesting visually, and some of them are uh, just a magnificent, uh, uh, let's just page through it. I think they're starting quietly. It's going to get crazy. I can't really pick it up, and uh, it's, a, it's a large album here. What we're seeing, what looks to you like, like stripes and stuff, there's metallics all over the place here. If I try and get the, the light angle, it's not going to shine. There's shiny all over here. These leaves are bronze. This is bronze or copper. This, the, the shapes of the butterfly are outlined in metallic pigments. All these leaves are in italic, uh, metallic pigments. Someone's asking, are they mostly opaque pigments? Almost everything you see here is opaque. Absolutely. For example, these flowers, they're on top of this background. This background would have been printed flat right across the whole piece of paper. We don't do this in ukiyo-e style. We have to chop out the background where we want something. This background is across the whole sheet of paper and then on top of it with a separate block, that white, that blue, that metallic, that yellow. They sit on top of this. Miyazaki, that's the stamp, I would guess, of a previous owner then. I said before it could have been a bookstore stamp. A bookstore wouldn't go ahead and stamp everything inside. They, they, so my guess is this is... Uh, an ex libri type of approach, guessing. Oh, look at this. This is fun. Can you see the pattern? Down here, the actual image, the man with a bow and arrow on the boat, the person sculling the boat, they are all 
done in metallic pigment. Great Wave Redux. There's no specific style for this method of printmaking, if, if you're asking for a style. The, the theme here is not ukiyo-e, and the technology used is not the same technology used in ukiyo-e printmaking. Oh, Ken-san, good morning. Good morning. Someone's asking, coming to the shop, how much the budget. We have prints from about 2,500 yen, which is about 15 bucks, up to a couple of thousand dollars. We have lots and lots of selection of prints at reasonable prices. Our whole gift corner is 4,000 yen each. You can choose all kinds of neat stuff. So 4,000 yen is fine. Udagawa-san, good morning, good morning. Beautifully done, you know. Look at the background here to get this gradation. It's not just a gradation, it's full of what they call atenashi. There's no carving on the block for this background. Look what's happening here. There's one color here, another color, another color, the top color. So the block for this would have been just a, a relief block. They would have printed blue on it down that far. They would have printed a base green up that far. That's one impression, two impressions. Then here, atenashi bokashi, a darker green, just with a brush, blop, 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 blop. Here again, blop, 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 blop. Atenashi means with no shape. There's nothing carved. So if we compared version one, version two, version three of these things, we'd see slight differences from print to print. And everything you see here, everything is part of the story. Oh, I know what some of these are. Look at this. This is the magic hammer. This is cloves. These are the lucky symbols. There's your raincoat bringing invisibility. We've had these before. This stuff is 20th century. If I had to put a single guess on the date, I'd say, oh, I could be off by a decade, 1920, but I could be off by a decade or more each way. Just, I don't know. I should actually, maybe it might help to go look at the back. Is there a date here? No, no information whatsoever. Just page after page after page. Everything's over the top and full of detail and full of meaning. Everything is full of meaning here. The background patterns are relevant to the text and the story. The objects, of course, are depicting what's going on in the story. And then my interest in them, you know, I know nothing about No or the history of No, but Dave's interest in these things is as, as technological achievement, you know. Even the poetry sheets at the top, I'm ignoring those, but the poetry sheets themselves also, they have metallic pigments. What looks like a shadow here is not. It's a mica powder. It's a dusting of mica powder to bring out a pattern. And of course, there's the interesting question. The people who bought this album back in the day, presumably there's somebody with an interest in the theater, in the no theater. And how would they have, what's the word if I say consume, how would they have consumed this? Just flipped through it now and then, put it back on the shelf, brought it back down, flipped through it now and then, put it back on the shelf. There's a scene back here. There's a temple and trees and rocks. 
Yes, somebody's asking about did the designer do other works? Now, we have, we've looked at a Genji set that's made very similar to this. I don't know if it was the same designer. Last night, getting ready for making this stream this morning, I did do a little bit of Googling, and this designer, Yamaguchi Roshu, Teishu, did lots and lots of other woodbot prints related to No. And I don't have any quick record of him doing something for the Genji, so I'm not sure if it's the same guy. We're not even halfway through, it just keeps going page after page after page. How much this would have cost, I don't know. After I got the auction the other day, I paid, I think it was 37, 35,000 yen, 37,000 yen for it. But after I got it, I went to the you know, website of the Old Book Dealers Association of Tokyo. And a couple of the dealers had it there. And the cheapest one being listed was 179,000 yen which would be about $1,400. And that one was a little beat up. This one seems to be in not bad condition. The pages are clean and neat, except for the toning. We've also got this, this Miyazaki stamp name. Eh? Did you see on the previous print, some of these prints? It looks like the stamp at some point was there, but it's on here, but not on the backing paper. And then this next one, there's a shadow here where the Miyazaki stamp looks like it was applied, but it's not there. So I am curious about that. Look at this, the pigment, look at this. The, the paper itself that the print is made on is heavily getting damaged. It's picking up the brown toning from the outside. Here you don't see it because the white pigment on the front of this paper is hiding it from us. But the paper underneath is going to be brown, brown, brown. I don't know what to do with this book. I don't know. If we leave it just like it is, it is going to die. It's just going to crumble into dust. The paper becomes so acidic that when you try to fold it or bend it, it just crumbles into dust. I don't know. So, someone's quoting Gummy's talking about there's a story, there's absolutely stories. At every stage here, there's stories. That looks black to you, it's not. It's uh, done with aluminum powder. Can we see it? This is actually shining when you hold the book. There it is. Look at that. This is a bronze. So what you're able to see through this camera is not the real thing that I'm seeing here. There's metallics and bling everywhere here. Well, so I'm saying, <clears throat> why does it become acidic? There's two or three things. It's packaged very poorly. It's packaged with a cheap bloody, even with the papers, it looks like even almost as bad as newsprint. They glued the pieces onto this. Why would they do that? That's part of the reason. The second reason is the paper that the prints were made on, I can't see at this point, but it could be a low quality paper. Why would they do that? I guess they had no sense that this was going to be something that was going to be useful 200 years in the future. It was just a commercial product. They're making stuff, try and sell it, make some more, try and sell it. They weren't making art for, for you know, posterity. It was a commercial product. Make a bunch and sell a bunch. So the metallics, if I do soak this, there's no way I'm going to put these in a bath per se. What I would try and do is I would put the thing face down and I would work with damp cloths from the background on the back of the paper to eventually get to the point where the glue softens and I could pull off the backing paper without immersing the print in water. But that's theoretical. There's no way I have time to mess around with this. And there's no way even I have the responsibility whether it should be left like this, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's the story? I really don't know. Is that a trap? An animal trap? A fox trap? Is it a bow and arrow? Is it both? I don't know. Sorry about my ignorance of this. You can even see, look at this, the, the vermilion Miyazaki stamp, how it's oxidized in a different way, depending on the pigments that it's on top of. Again, the stamp. But yeah, this packaging is the original packaging. I wonder, maybe it isn't. Maybe this Miyazaki person has got these prints and pasted them into this album by himself. Possible. It's really too bad. I'm seeing this with the light shining. I've got the, the, the video light here shining. So I'm seeing everything with the reflection of the light and it's all bling everywhere. There's gold, silver, there's patterns. Is there no way I can get that to you? I don't know. I'm sorry. There it is. Look, you can see. Look at that then. There you are. You see the thing? Look at this. The whole thing is, is a gold, silvery. All these, these patterns in the background are all reflecting. There you are. Look. You can't even see them. So I'm sorry, you're just seeing a sort of a rough overview of what these things look like. Same thing here, it looks dark to you, not to me. Look. <laughs> This is not Dave's favorite kind of printmaking, absolutely. For me, <coughs> I want clear lines, good calligraphy, flat colors, nice embossing, rich paper, Dave's personal view of what printmaking should be. But I gotta admit, this, this stuff is, it's a thing. Yeah, something, candlelight or a flashlight or something, yeah, maybe. Calligraphy, can I? Is it a is it a, a character? Sorry, at this point then, just to, to flip through quickly. It just keeps going on and on. I think that's the last one. There's the last one. Let's leave it there. The designer here was Yamaguchi Doshu. It's possible his name is pronounced Teishu. I think it's Yamaguchi Doshu. And the set of prints is called No To Kyogen. No and Kyogen. It's about the No theater and the, the comic intervals in the theater called Kyogen. And as I said, everything we're seeing here is related to the stories and the characters and the, the background of these no prints. Okay, there we are. You've got your socks on or off, whatever, I don't know. Why am I enthusiastic about it? Why do I think this is interesting? Remember, every single detail that you've seen on every one of these sheets of paper, without exception, was carved into a block of wood, carved into a, a piece of wood, then printed by printers, one copy, two copies, three copies, four copies. Every single thing that you have seen all the way going through this book was chopped onto a piece of wood and then printed. It's an incredible, astonishing achievement. Hard to believe that it was actually done. It'll never, ever, ever happen again. No one will ever do things like this anymore. Okay, this raid thing, can somebody give me the instructions on how to do this? Let's finish this off by jumping over to visit our friend who is walking at the beginning of the Tokaido Road. Somebody gave me instructions at the beginning on how to do this. What do I do? Type backslash raid 
Sen say, if I get it wrong, I don't know what's going to happen. Mars, Yan. Okay, I'll click the button in a minute. Thank you very much, guys. This is Thursday. I will be back here two more days, Saturday morning here in Asakusa. We are now going to send you, yeah, backslash raid space sensei margin. Oh, no capital letters. Does it make a difference? Let's try it. I'll see you on Saturday. Let's go say hi to Jason as he's walking along the highway. Thanks very much. It says this channel is intended for mature audiences. It works. We're doing it. It takes a while. So the chat stays here. But I don't see his stuff. So I don't see this, but you do. You can press the Raid Now button. Oh, I see it. Raid Now. Okay, I see a new button. Missing so many people. Like hold on. Martian, Giant read. Uh, okay, hold on. We're gonna try and walk and talk. I know it's bad manners, I but him. Harvey Neko, I thanks for the follow. Martian, Girl made of cheese, thanks for the follow. One node Martian, twenty-three, guy, thanks for the follow. Uh, the, that Texas cryptid, thanks for the follow. Happy by three, Sensei thanks for the follow. Martian, that engine. Guy, that engine nerd, please. thanks for the follow. Edin Gal, thanks for the follow. I believe in him. I don't think Sensei Martian is a good guy. Uh, okay. <coughs> he has horn this is really healing my homesick heart. Thank you. No, thanks for coming in, Happy by 3. Renfield, 1897. Thanks for coming in. I believe in him. So where are we currently located? Ah, uh, you know what? Here, I, I want to... Let me set this up. Okay, we're going to take a brief, brief I pause. I don't think Sensei Martian would do such a thing. I think Sensei Martian's a good guy. I don't think he would trust. I believe in him. I don't think Sensei Martian would do such a thing. Have a look. Well, are you done? Mm, we're off. Yep. Well, what are you to? And a, yeah, we raided. We sent our people, 500 people, over to somebody else's stream. The guy who's walking the Tokaido, one of our chat members, is started a project today to walk to Kyoto on the old Tokaido oh, road. Wow. So he started this morning. So he's, he's streaming live now. So at the end of our stream, there's a thing on Twitch called a raid where I can say, click raid, and all people who are watching my stream, I quit and they automatically start watching his stream. So he's been walking down the street and all of us, he got a message. Is it on right now? This is his stream. 
He's walking to Tokaido. It doesn't. It just. It's just a street. He left Nihonbashi a couple of hours ago, so he's walking towards uh, Kanagawa. How many days does it take? I think he's planning a few weeks. You know, he's going to do about 25 kilometers a day or something. So it's going to take what? You know, four weeks, maybe or five weeks, something. I don't know. Oh, and he's got like a GoPro on his head. Yeah, he's got it. I think he's on his shoulder on his head. I think he, when he comes in here, it's always sitting on his shoulder. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. And all of our people have just jumped in, and the first thing they see ads because he runs ads. So uh, what, 500 no. people just jumped in. He's going to get a fortune today because 500 people saw three ads each, so he's right, going right. to get revenue. <laughs> That's awesome. Hmm. Not That's a cool thing. Well, he's trying to show a map. He's going to, they were asking, "Where are you so far?" Hmm. And he's really not well organized. He should have got this a bit more organized <laughs> so that he could. Where I'm? Because people right. are going to ask, "Where are you?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have had a pop-up map. Hmm. That's true. So I don't think all 500 people so are not going to hang around. Right I think that the two cameras or show that. Uh, I don't know. Will he show like the spot where the, the 53 stations are actually at around? You know, I know. I don't no know detail. There. It's just here. It's Tokaido Day One, right. Nihon Bashi. That would be go. a good idea. You know, but be like this is this spot where. But they're not. One of us are okay. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Uh, no, I'm Ignore you. I was just saying, oh, I'm sorry about the. Uh, oh no, we we finish, 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 finish. I found all the parts. Okay. I think it's okay. Don't worry. Did you get a frame too? Pardon me. Frame too. Well, they're in the box. The oh, show. Okay. I just took the box, right? So no problem. Oh, yeah. no. Okay, so no problem. Careful. And then there's more coming. There's another. I have no idea. There's stuff coming in. The, the mailman brought one more just now. Yeah, that one. Is it yours? Or mine? I don't remember. I'll check by the number. Yeah, okay, probably yours. I guess I don't remember. What's coming for me now? Ah, um, oh, and also I wanted to hand you the Sinjafuda. Uh, oh yeah, but I have to buy it. So I haven't mm -hmm. paid for it yet. So, so okay. The Mm, okay, uh, so uh, do I need a code number or FM number or nothing or it, it hasn't become Shisan? I don't know what to do. I know. Uh, this is what I've talked to Yamada san about this because if I just buy it, we need the same number to show it's a flea market uh, sale. Uh, I see the Twitch stream is still on. Eh? We sent everybody as a raid to show. Yeah, I got a phone call from one of the Twitch viewers. Okay. He kindly told us that uh, it's still it's there. Still on. <laughs>